All right, guys, welcome to the show. Uh, today, I have a jam-packed one for you. So I got some new facts about the raid on Mar-a-Lago, and that is, I mean, the stuff in there is stunning. I mean, this keeps getting worse and worse for Trump. Um, I didn't think it could get worse. I thought we were at rock bottom. No, no, no. We are way beyond rock bottom. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. I also have his new comments. He was on some far-right outlet and he was he has a new plan for when he's president next. He wants to, um, let's say, be a little lenient with the people who rioted on January 6th. That video is incredible. I mean, this guy just keeps sprinting further and further to the fringe. I also have uh, Ted Cruz has a plan to try to stop student loan debt elimination. Um, you're. Not going to want to miss that story. I mean, that is infuriating, but it's also uh, politically idiotic because it's difficult when 43 million people are given material support and then you come out there and you're like, what if we took that away? Uh, I don't think that's going to go well for you in the next election, buddy. Um, and then later on in the show, there was an assassination attempt of the VP of Argentina. And what's beyond amazing about this is we have it on video. It got caught on video. So I'm going to show you that video. It's really something else. It's really wild. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started here. Here We'll jump into it. So these are the new numbers that we got released by the Department of Justice on the raid of Mar-a-Lago. And this is really incredible. So they say over 10,000 U.S. government documents and photographs without classified markings were seized from Mar-a-Lago, DOJ says. So look, let me just say up front. If it's 10,000 U.S. government documents and they are they're not classified, I, I don't care. Like the, the whole classified thing is what makes it newsworthy. I mean, there was also stories about how Trump had a lot of like newspaper clippings from when he was president. Like anytime anybody says anything about him, he likes to save it and look at it and probably jerk off to it later on or whatever. Um, I don't care about that stuff. I care about the classified stuff. And actually... It even goes beyond that a little bit, because if it's classified and I don't think the thing should be classified, even then I'll give him a pass. Right. But I mean, the whole crux of this story and why it's such a bombshell is that a lot of the stuff was not only classified. It was like the top secret of the top secret. And it, it's so sensitive, you can't even view it like outside of a protected government office. And Trump just had that stuff sitting around Mar-a-Lago. So th that's why this is important to me. So I don't care about the 10,000 government documents that... Um, you know, really nothing hinges on because they're not even classified. But here's some more specifics. Over 10,000 government documents. Okay, we did that. 54 documents labeled secret, including seven documents from Trump's office. So we, in other words, he had them basically all over the place in Mar-a-Lago. In numerous places, he had secret documents. 54 total, seven from his office specifically. 18 documents labeled top secret, including seven documents from his office. Okay, that's crazy. The top secret, that's now we're getting to the super high classification here. 18 documents, top secret, seven from his office, either in a box or in his desk or whatever, without, you know, the, the proper security around it, to say the least. Again, these are documents he wasn't even allowed to have at Mar-a-Lago, never mind have them like laying around his office all willy-nilly and nonchalant. Then we have 31 documents labeled confidential, including three documents from Trump's office marked secret. 48 empty folders with classified banners. Um, 42. Oh, okay. Wait, wait. I just glossed over that and I shouldn't have. 48 empty folders, empty folders with classified banners. Let's come back to that in a second. 42 return to staff secretary slash military aid folders. More than 11,000 government owned document and photo documents and photos without classified markings. Again, I don't care about the non classified ones, but okay. 48 empty folders with classified banners. So what are the like what are the options here on the table as to what went down with those folders or, or the documents that were in those folders? Like what are what's on the menu here? What are the potential outcomes? Where are those documents? Well, I mean, either Trump has them and he lost them, or he has them and he's hiding them for something he's not allowed to use them for, or they were stolen, or 
he sold them. As far as I could tell, those are the only options here. What other options could there be? We're talking about 48 empty folders with classified banners. Now, if you wanted to make the argument, hey, maybe he just took some classified folders on the way out just because he thought they were cool. I, maybe if he saw, like, you know, maybe a handful of them, he might have done 48 classified banners sitting alongside other classified and top secret documents just chilling in his office. I don't know, dog. I don't know, dog. That seems super fishy to me. That seems super suspect to me. Now, by the way, you know, we've been having these conversations about, oh, are they going to indict him? Are they not going to indict him? Are they going to convict him? What exactly are they going to go after him on? Like, what will the charges be? When you see this new fact, 48 empty folders with classified banners, now you start thinking, how could they not indict him? By the way, Judge Napolitano said, oh, he's definitely getting indicted. And I don't even think Napolitano wants him to get indicted. But he's like, I, I think he's definitely getting indicted. One of Trump's lawyers went on TV and basically said, like, look, I've been in his office a, a bunch of times. That's where he had a lot of these classified materials. And Trump kept allowing other people to go into that office with him. He would bring people into his office regularly. Oh, my God, you fucking moron. You fu Do you not understand what you guys are admitting to, what you guys are casually admitting to? Then there was that Trump tweet where he, you know, admitted, hey, I know the Department of Justice and the FBI took those pictures of the documents laying out on the floor, but I need everybody to understand, I'm not a slob, and the documents were not like that. They were in the boxes. But wait, you were just saying five and a half minutes ago the documents were planted, and now you're saying, now you're admitting they weren't planted, I had them in my boxes, you guys put them on the floor to make me look sloppy, to make me look like a slob. Okay, you just admitted to crimes, bro. You just admitted to crimes to own the libs or to own the FBI or whatever. What are we talking about here, dude? What are we talking about here? So I mean, this is crazy, man. This is this is out of this world. Um, these new revelations are next level, because, again, I don't see how it's not an open and shut case. If you got a dude, you have a dude who's got 48 empty folders with classified banners and you still can't account for those documents. They don't know where those documents are. Trump, Trump seemingly doesn't know. The FBI and the DOJ don't know. I mean, so not only did you take classified documents you weren't supposed to take, uh, you returned some of them but lied about the rest. They went and got back the rest. But there's still some missing? Bro, how is that not an open and shut case? For real. I'm trying to put aside whatever sort of political bias I have. I don't understand how it's not an open and shut case. But now look, the, the, it gets deeper. This case gets even deeper. You guys are going to be amazed by this fact. Ready? So this is from Tristan Snell of MainStreet.Law. So he's a lawyer, and uh, he was one of the people that actually prosecuted the Trump University case. Now, remember, in that case, um, Trump settled out of court for, I believe the number was $27 million. So basically, Trump did commit fraud with Trump University, settled out of court just to you know pay off the people who had the complaints and were defrauded. So, in other words, this guy, he might know a thing or two, okay? He says, even more disturbing given today's news. In October 2021, CIA counter intel warned that an unusually high number of U.S. spies were being killed, captured, or compromised. In January 2021, Trump stole documents on these kinds of informants, and 43 classified folders are now empty. What? So there was an unusually high number of U.S. spies being killed, captured, or compromised. Now, are there other explanations for how this happened? I don't know. I'm not an expert. But that certainly is fishy the way the timing lines up here. So that means, and look, Trump has parties all the time at Mar-a-Lago. All the time. With all sorts of rich douchebags. Are some of them, you know, foreign spies? Did they sneak into his office? Did they steal some of the contents uh, from those 43 folders? Is Trump selling it? Like, you know, was the original speculation because of all the dots that were connected about the Trump family connections with Saudi Arabia? Jared taking $2 billion, for example, for a business deal. And then you had Trump himself taking probably hundreds of millions of dollars to have these various golf events 
at his golf courses. Either everything is fishy here, guys. Everything is fishy. But here's the thing. Even if you don't go with the fishy interpretation, the other interpretation is extreme incompetence and still committing a crime. It is still a crime. You lost those documents. Where are they, bro? You can't even find them. You can't return them. You took classified documents and top secret documents and it's missing. Whether that was negligence and incompetence or whether it was nefarious because you're selling it, either way, you are caught red-handed, dog. Look, I feel the same way looking at this stuff now, too. That I don't know how you don't indict. Look, the only way that Merrick Garland doesn't move forward with this, and this is a real possibility, I don't want to poo-poo this possibility because this is how Democrats typically act anyway, is basically sitting around discussing it and coming to the conclusion, if we go after Trump, if we prosecute him, then that will effectively rip the country apart and it'll make it so that there's a massive backlash. There's going to be violence in the streets. Now, by the way, I think all of those things are true. I think there will be a backlash. I think there will be violence in the streets. Um, I think that his cultish base will do cultish things if their dear leader is going down or is about to go down. So I think all that stuff is accurate. I just don't think it's a reason to not go after him. I think you have to like uphold rule of law. I think there's really no way around that. And so, you know, I don't want to make the same mistake that Obama made with Bush and Cheney, where he says, hey, we look forward, we don't look backward, because, you know, yeah, they did some torture. Yeah, we tortured some folks, as Obama said. Yeah, we did some illegal wars. Yeah, you know, the criminals on Wall Street, I'll let them get away also, because we look forward and not backward. Because then what? You, it's a moral hazard now. You, now the precedent is, you get a, if you do these crimes, you will get away with it, because we've decided it's, it creates instability to go after you. Well, the message you send are, is now, yeah, go nuts. Commit whatever crimes you want. If you're part of an elite group, we will let you get away with it. So I definitely think that's in the realm of possibility for Merrick Garland to say, oh my God, this is too risky, this is too extreme, I don't want to tear apart the fabric of the nation or whatever other you know liberal bullshit he'll convince himself of. Um, so it's a real possibility, but in terms of the evidence to this point, man, it is, it is incredibly damning. And it is damn near open and shut, in my opinion. I mean, we're really talking about, you got this dude dead to rights, bro. Even if you put aside the whole, you know, more spies being captured thing, even if you say, no, the nefarious interpretation of Trump selling it for, for profit, selling the information for profit, I'm not buying that either. And that's, you know, you need more evidence to prove that. Even if you put all that stuff aside, at the very least, you have extreme negligence and incompetence which has led to, very clearly, crimes being committed, and those crimes have serious penalties, serious punishments that go hand-in-hand hand with them, including time behind bars. But, you know, again, you're going after a former president here, so the stakes are raised. So we'll see, but man, I don't know how this story keeps getting crazier and crazier, but it certainly does. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop, and watch that video on screen right now.